the Honourable Minister of Health and Child Care, Dr. Abadia Moyo, as the Acting CEO of NAP, Mr. Albert Maneji, as the um, ZAN Board Chair, Ms. Talent Jumo, the res Deputy Resident Representative of UNDP, uh, Madame Madalina Onoja, uh, the Provincial Medical Director for the Mozingo, Dr. Shamu, communities, fellow colleagues from the UN, government, civil servants present, ladies and gentlemen, and others. UNAIDS is privileged, is very proud, is honored to be associated with this event today. Having the right legal environment as is being championed by the government of Zimbabwe through the legal environment assessment and its subsequent implementation through the action plan that will also be launched today and having a civil society that is organized is something that UNAIDS would love to see. So UNAIDS, as you know, and as has been mentioned by uh, Mr. Pofu, has made a lot of effort in tracking the global epidemic. And again, as he rightfully said, Zimbabwe is always uh, completes its reports on time. But completing the reports on time is one thing. Performance is another. The good news is that Zimbabwe has also shown that it's very serious with the 1990-90 targets. I think we should give the country a clap. Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, the first 90, we're almost there. Or oh, we are there. The second 90 is where we are almost there, and we need to, to put in a little bit more effort. And also the third 90. We have just slightly more than 400 days to the point where we're expected to achieve the 90-90-90. So we need to join our hands, make sure that all the barriers that are preventing us from reaching that milestone are removed. And that's why we would like to see the legal environment assessment uh, recommendations implemented. Uh, the task that I have been given, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple. I've been asked to invite a man who is no stranger in the machine of he, uh, he is from Mokemista, which is just some few kilometers, about 20 kilometers from here. A man who joined one of our public institutions, which had challenges, but he actually through his innovation and his belief, is a man who says, you should not think within the box. He says, think outside the box, but not outside the box, but away from the box. The man who actually made sure that the public institution gets an ISO certification, which is not very easy given the resources that are difficult. So, the work of today, we have been touring our health institutions to help what we can say, management by walking around to have first class information, to have first uh, class information on the, on the what is going on. Ladies and gentlemen, the men that I'm talking to, I'm talking to none other than Dr. Obadiah Loyo. 
Can we put our heads together to welcome you? So it is actually a great privilege and honor to stand before you. You are the esteemed guests and dignitaries at this uh, auspicious event wearing the Legal Environment Assessment LEA for HIV, TB, and Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights Report will be launched together with the Action Plan and the Civil Society Organization's CSO's database. The launch of uh, LEA will be a progressive step in not only ensuring that key affected populations enjoy the constitutional, constitutionally guaranteed right to health, but also that the nation moves closer to achieving the global vision of ending AIDS by the year 2030 without leaving anyone behind. I was asking that question to our country directors, and I was saying, are you sure we will have you know, eradicated AIDS, HIV AIDS by 2030? And they say, we will. So I say, please make sure that we achieve that, and for us to be able to achieve that, just continue supporting and funding our programs. And the same, we shall continue doing that, it's our mandate. So we must clap our hands for them because they're going to carry on funding our program. So we, as Zimbabwe, we have actually made tremendous strides in fighting HIV and TB with the majority of the affected populations being covered by prevention, treatment, care, and support initiatives and programs. It has, however, been observed that the national response to these epidemics uh, has largely been generalized, and thus leaving behind key populations such as the prisoners, sex workers, people who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, and the LGBTI community. The Key Populations Implementation Plan 2019 to 2020. And the Civil Society database and website, all supported by the UNDP and the United Nations team on HIV and AIDS. I have no shadow of a doubt that the LEA recommendations, the action plan, and the CSO database will be referred or referenced and put to use by all the relevant stakeholders at all levels, at the various stages of the health delivery process as we put communities first in efforts to end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. This is what we have to do. End AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. I thank you. Society coordinated platform on health, HIV and AIDS, SRHR. Then you got this lovely app. Communities make a difference. Mm -hmm. Very nice. We have the CSO database and uh, website.
My name is Evelyn Mugwagwa, provincial field manager for PSI. In PSI, we do social marketing of health services, especially in view of ending HIV and AIDS by 2030. So we are working towards HIV epidemic control. So here, we've got our tent for maximizing the moment. We do social marketing of condoms so that we prevent HIV. The next tent, we are doing HIV testing, especially using the self-testing mode and even the blood-based mode. And the next tent we are doing sexual reproductive health, where we are also offering family planning services. Then the next tent we are also doing voluntary medical male circumcisions, where we are also circumcising. Can life came a boss. When you live the bossy life, that means you have been circumcised and you are smart. You are sixty percent protected against HIV, and you are also protect, protecting your wife against cervical cancer. And your risk of getting STIs has also been reduced. That's can life came a boss. When you talk of maximize the moment, we mean uh, it's a special moment that you'll be uh, having with your partner or your friend. So we mean this moment, we don't want you to end up like uh, thinking, what have I done? Am I not going to contract HIV? Is she not going to get pregnant? And want pregnancy? So we don't want to ruin that moment. We want to add flavor to that moment. By maximize it, we mean we want you not to think about those things after you've enjoyed your moment. You want to add flavor. You want to appreciate it. But make sure that you are protected from HIV, from uh, STIs, and from uh, that unwanted pregnancy. So you would want you to enjoy the whole process. So, so that's what we mean by maximize the moment. Enjoy the process to the fullest. My name is Edmond Nyakanda. I work for Family AIDS Caring Trust, which is headquarters in Mutare. And uh, we implement the Children Tariro Project, which is actually an HIV response program, which we implement together with partners. In uh, Manikaland, we are found in five districts. Uh, that is Chipinge, Mutare, Mutasa, Bohera, and Makoni. And then in Mashingo, we are in Gutu. And in Gutu, we implement the program through ZAP UZ. And uh, in Buera, we implement through Rujeko. My name is Tembinko Singwenya. I'm a health promotions officer. I work for Ministry of Health, AIDS and TB uh, under the program um, targeted screening for TB. Uh, so today we are here in Mashingo Bucheke Stadium doing targeted screening for TB program as well as HIV testing and diabetes testing as well here at the Mucheke Stadium here in Mashingo. So basically our job we do it in our communities whereby we move around communities, screening communities, uh, especially we have got a target group that we really target. We are targeting people living with HIV, the diabetic, we also target the minors, the prisoners, and the, and the ex-prisoners as well. We also target uh, the under five children who are malnourished. My name is Talent Jumo, and I'm a board chairperson for the Zimbabwe AIDS Network. The Zimbabwe AIDS Network is an organization that brings together community-based organizations, uh, NGOs that are working in the area of HIV and sexual and reproductive health and rights. We are very pleased uh, this afternoon that we are celebrating World AIDS Day, 1 December 2019, under the theme Communities Make a Difference. We are very pleased that so many years later, 
the UN, UN community and, and our governments now, now recognize that this struggle cannot be won if we do not put communities at the center of, of the response. Those who yeah. come from Emakaya in the rural areas will know that if you are constructing a house and then you are out to roof, you will need materials that are not in Mungo and Bariro. In English, I would say you need, you need your timber, timber but when you look at the timber, you have the thick uh, plants, but you also have the brother, you need the screws. And, and we feel in the, the response, there is a the moment when we thought, ah, now, now that we have uh, air of feet, we, we can just ask, ask people to queue up, up. So they will definitely swallow them. I think at some, some point we realize that no. We, we cannot only really take a high-dimensionalized approach and then assume that who win this war against AIDS. So we are happy that we recognize that we need to different pieces. No one in Mariro, Muswana Makavi, would mean that we need a multi-stakeholder approach that places communities at the center. Our UN bodies, our funding partners, our governments, civil society, and communities are all important in this fight. We want to focus, uh, as we're talking about putting the communities at the centre, what are communities doing? Communities will be key in the prevention program because they are the ones who live, for example, in the communities where our girls are being sexually abused. About 50% of those sexual encounters is as a result of rape. They may call it abortion, but they take rape. And then when you look at those cases, those girls do not report because traditionally in communities people will say, ah, I'm not going to have a I'm not going to have a And in that case, it's not treated as a rape case. And therefore, these young girls become HIV positive. Because you don't believe that they've been raped, they, they can't access post exposure for pro prophylaxis for HIV, for example. So, so communities, parents, uh, teachers, uh, church you know, groupings have a responsibility uh, in, in the prevention efforts in this country because they are the ones who have to believe that when a girl says they've been raped, they don't ask. So I have say, what were you putting on? But, but they will stand with the girl and make sure that she can access preventive measures that are available, that can be made available through our good ministry, through our national health council, and through the support of partners. It is these communities who are responsible for demand generation. We know and acknowledge and appreciate that the global funds and HIV, malaria, this committed and not millions, millions of dollars towards the fight against HIV. Yeah, but but this these resources need for, 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 for communities to take leadership because for communities are the ones responsible for demand generation. Services may be made available, but these communities, if the church, if our traditional leadership, if our families are not going to encourage our own to go and access these services. Those resources will surely go to waste. Our uh, recent we experienced challenges with us as stock house, and because I know women are also talking about contraceptives, but yes, our stock house because today we are here to work every day. We concentrate on HIV issues. Uh, communities are again the ones that march to parliament and say, "Our oh, parliamentarians, please someone." Uh, those those in the supply chain you want to understand what is happening. So the struggle has been alive because communities have been at the center. We are happy today because communities are being encouraged to push the struggle forward. We know that we can win because communities are ready to take leadership and keep fighting on. And I just wanted to end uh, with this remark that I believe that Certain communities must have, as a team, must have been uh, suggested by African. Because in Africa, we look after our old and the young. We do not send them to old people's homes. So we value 
our, our community. If you look at the number for example, it's in the And end with community. I was already here then, as you know. HIV AIDS was already killing people in Zimbabwe and in the United States in 1992. And we did have World AIDS Day. But at that time, it was in no way a celebration. It was a commemoration of something very sad because, as everyone here knows, in the 1980s and the 1990s, the disease was winning. HIV AIDS was winning. I spoke to a man over there just now. All of his brothers and sisters died from this disease. He's the only survivor in his family. So there was nothing to celebrate 20 years ago on World AIDS Day. But when I come back today and I see all these tents and canopies here, ah, okay, I'm saved. When, when I, I see all of these organizations, 15, 20 Zimbabwean organizations, each of them fighting some aspect of the war against this disease, that is very inspirational and it's something to celebrate. 20 or 25 years ago, you would not find a solidarity speech from the organization of people living positively with HIV AIDS. You would not find a group of young people standing there and saying, we are living positively with HIV AIDS. We have come a very long way. And we have come that long way as a partnership between the people of Zimbabwe and the people of the United States. I am very proud of the role that my government has played in this effort. In 2019, the US government contributed $163 million to the fight against HIV AIDS in Zimbabwe. Since it's the beginning of PEPFAR, the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, the American people have given over one billion just here in Zimbabwe as part of that effort. So we are very proud of that role. Thank you. But it's important to remember the theme of this event. The theme of today's World AIDS Day is not government makes a difference. We work very hard in the U.S. Embassy in Harare. The Honorable Minister works very hard and all of his colleagues work very hard. And none of that work matters. None of that work makes any difference without the work of the communities. It's community by community and individual by individual that we ensure that every person knows his or her status and is on treatment and stays on treatment and suppresses the virus so that this disease can be controlled. So the work is one of true partnership between our governments but also between our people. I just want to note one more of the, the groups which is there, the Zimfia. Many of you probably have already seen the Zimfia representatives in your communities uh, coming around, asking you questions, collecting information. It's only by that information that we can achieve this final victory over the disease. Because from that information, we understand exactly how to target our efforts to finish the fight against HIV AIDS. So I thank our Zimfia colleagues for being here. Again, the US government, very proud to support that work and I encourage you all to welcome them into your communities as a very important part of this effort. Allow me to acknowledge the steps that we have taken as a country towards meeting the three nineties treatment targets towards the age by 2030, which has led to the majority of people living with HIV, which has led the majority of people living with HIV now on treatment, and the decline of HIV infection, 
as, as long, long as AIDS related that, let, let us continue to do more toward education and, and provision of services to young, young the vulnerable, vulnerable and, and the marginalized people who are likely to be affected by HIV. HIV. As, as Zimbabwe has become, become a model in the management of sports, let us all congratulate ourselves for working together in the fight against HIV and AIDS. We acknowledge that our community made the difference, and Zimbabwe has demonstrated it through effective engagement with civil society organizations, the private and informal sectors, just to mention a few. We have taken time to listen to their stories on, on making the difference and changing lives. Let us also look back and remember our family members and friends who have died from AIDS-related illness and obligate our community with all who are living with or affected by HIV. Globally, there are more than 35 million people who have died of AIDS and making it one of the most destructive pandemics in history. In conclusion, Director of Ceremony, the success we have achieved to date gives us so much hope for the future. As we look ahead, we must not be content with the achievements we have made so far. As we aim for the future target of the 90s, Organized labor has played a critical role where awareness is program has been taken down to the workplace and set up specific policies on HIV and AIDS development. Our guest of honor, Minister of Health and Child Care, Honorable Dr. Obadiamu. Honorable Cabinet Ministers and Deputy Ministers here present. Honorable Members of Parliament and Senate here present. I feel greatly honored to welcome you all to Masungo Province on this special occasion to commemorate the World Aids Day coordinated by the National AIDS Council. We are privileged to host this International Day on behalf of our country. The decision to select my province is to us as expression of trust and confidence given to the people of Masini, as having the capacity to host events of international dimension. Honorable guest of honor, Masingo Province extends its warm welcome to you. We take this event as the people of Masingo to express our deep values of Ubuntu by extending an invitation to you to visit and tour the following attractions which have made Masingo a province of greatness. The Great Tugim Coast Dam, which is Zimbabwe's largest man-made inland dam. The Great Limpopo Transfrontier Park, which includes our own Bonare Joe National Park. The Great Zimbabwe Monument, which is one of the world's seven wonders and the only Asian man-made monument that gave its name to our country. The monument stands tall as an expression and inspiration to our country and culture of accommodativeness, hospitality, respect, unity, peace, tolerance, honest and hard work. Indeed, on my own behalf and on behalf of the people of Masing, I would like you to enjoy the warmth and freshness of our provincial environment which has become one of the greatest as, as evidenced by our natural and man-made endowments above. Ladies and gentlemen, the successful commemoration of the World AIDS Day in my province is a constant reminder to us that the entire world, that Zimbabwe, is determined to accelerate the implementation of sustainable development goals. Our country's vision 2030 
as enunciated by His Excellency, the President Comrade G. G. Munangagwa, that we become an upper middle income and prosperous society is driven by the interlinkages of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Mashingo Province stands fully behind the fulfillment of our country's commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, in particular, goal number three, on good health and well-being. We have had our fair share of challenges in the face of HIV and AIDS pandemic. Out of a total population of 1,486,604, according to 2012 census, the provincial HIV prevalence rate stands at 12.4%, translating to an estimate of 138,000. 239 people living with HIV. Of these, 126, 703 are adults and 11,536 are children. The above figures require us to strengthen both public and private sector interventions and reinforce them with the assistance of the United Nations Development Agency. Going forward, I urge our partners to continue using the multi-stakeholder approach to manage the prevalence and incidence of HIV and AIDS. As government through the devolution program, our local authorities, our local authorities received a total of RTGS $12 million, which has been utilized for social infrastructure development, especially clinics in rural areas with the hope of making marginalized areas catch up with developed ones. In the same manner, His Excellency the President Comrade D. Munangagwa is pushing for the achievement of an upper middle income country by 2030 by ensuring through reforms and opening up so that Zimbabwe will leapfrog to catch up with other fast developing nations. In growing our provincial GDP as Mashingo, we have targeted the following sectors in their order priority. Agriculture, mining, tourism, manufacturing, and services. It is, however, quite disheartening to note that our targeted priority economic drivers have equally become HIV and AIDS. What sports? Shirezi, high HIV prevalence is attributed to mig migrant labor in large-scale sugarcane farms. Mashara and areas with small-scale mining operations have not been spread just like those along our Mashingo, Bed Bridge Highway and tertiary institutions. In light of the above, the multi-stakeholder approach remains an important vehicle to address the exposures that emanate from major drivers of HIV and AIDS in my province. These major drivers including behaviors such as widespread practices of multiple and concurrent sexual relationships, cross-generational sex and risk sexual behavior as a result of drug and alcohol abuse. In the face of this reality, Mashingo Province is committed and ready to make a difference in the fight against HIV and AIDS. I continue to urge players in my province, the Minister of Health and Child Care, National AIDS Council, private sector, church media, and development partners to strengthen their collaborative work in HIV prevention through increased in initiatives on HIV testing and counseling, condom programming, voluntary medical male circumcision, sexually transmitted infections, control and prevention of mother to child transmission. Our strong hope is equally on research and development as we look forward to a breakthrough on new approaches and drugs to fight HIV and AIDS. In line with the theme for this year, 
communities makes a difference. I would like again to urge the community of Masingo to support all government and development partners-led programs aimed at fighting HIV and AIDS. I salute our village health workers and all community health cadres who are doing a good job right on the grassroots front line in promoting primary health and child care services. I would equally want to applaud the role played by the family institution in taking care of the affected and infected. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to take this opportunity to appreciate the role the excellence the First Lady and the Health Ambassador, Amayam Nangagwa, is playing through the Angel of Hope Foundation. I recognize a cocktail of interventions in the province paving way for awareness and mobilization of communities through strategic outreach to women and vulnerable communities. We are inspired by a level of reach to women with critical health services. Over 5,442 women were screened for various cancers at Mashingo Provincial Hospital, ZCC Mbungo Estates, and the Rufaro Ap Ap Apostolic Faith Mission Church in Zimbabwe. AFM. In addition, Excellence Amaim Nangagwa also empowered women on laws, processes, and procedures on handling inheritance issues. These interventions is helpful to widows and orphans who are facing challenges in their endeavor to benefit from diseased instincts. Furthermore, the First Lady, Amaim Nangagwa, upscaled the social protection intervention with a focus on protecting vulnerable and orphaned children. We are a proud beneficiary of a decision to take Chambuta children's home in Chirezi district a state-of-the-art national center for the provisions of care to vulnerable children and orphans. Distinguished guests, I would like again to pay my sincere tribute to our private sector for upholding and fulfilling the enabling provisions of the public-private partnership in enhancing health service delivery. Through their good corporate social responsibility programs, the private sector has played an important role in the refurbishment, maintenance, and construction of health centers in the province. Beneficiaries include Mashingo Provincial Hospital, Theatre and Laundry, Gudo and Soan Poly Clinic in Chirezi. These efforts in secure the welfare of our people. I urge other companies and captains of industry to take a leaf from such community-oriented investment. To further strengthen our desire to secure health services requirements of our communities, I would like to pledge my commitment towards the construction of a new central hospital in Mashingo, who will provide land in our city for the development of the hospital. These processes will be anchored by facilitating the establishment of relevant key support utilities, such as accommodation for specialized staff, investment in solar for powering theaters, mortuaries, laboratories, and medicine and vaccine storage facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, Mashingo Province expresses and tenders to you its very hospitable welcome and receives you all with a warm heart. We are inspired and encouraged by the support given to us as a province and country by the United Nations Development Agencies here present towards the fight against HIV and AIDS and other diseases. Indeed, on behalf of the people of Mashingo, in my own behalf, I welcome you all I thank you, the tender Siabonga. Uh, thank you again, our Provincial Development Coordinator, for giving me this opportunity to introduce to you our guest of honor, Honorable Dr. Obadia Moyo. Dr. Obadia Moyo is a visionary and creative leader 
with a proven record of accomplishment in both medical and executive management. He is an experienced health care administrator who adopts a professional hands-on approach. He is skilled in problem solving and obtaining achievements by using initiative and drive to gain results. Believes in loyalty and commitment to an organization, utilizing available facilities and resources to produce the best possible results. He is considered as a leading medical strategist in Zimbabwe. He won several international awards in recognition of his contribution to the international society in nephrology and uh, pathology. Through his achievement, he is rated as an eminent strategist in the medical industry in Zimbabwe and the region. Educated in Zimbabwe, United Kingdom and the West Indies, Dr. Moyo earned several academic qualifications and is a registered renal specialist, consultant, chemical pathologist. In 2000, Dr. Moyo was elected as deputy president of the Health Professions Authority of Zimbabwe. And in 2004, he was elected as the president of the Health Professional Authority of Zimbabwe. Dr. Moyo is a founder member of the World Council for Renal Care and is a founder of Zimbabwe Kidney Foundation Renal Services, where he serves as the chairman and executive director. He was appointed as a chief executive officer of Chitungwiza Central Hospital in September 2005, a position he held until his appointment as Minister of Health and Child Care. Under his leadership, Chitungwiza Central Hospital became the first hospital to be ISO certified in 2000 in Zimbabwe. In 2017, Dr. Moyo was honored for being the best in the medical industry in Zimbabwe. Dr. Moe was voted as the overall Zimbabwe Businessman of the Year by Zimbabwe Business Awards in 2018. In 2018, again, he was also voted as the Zimbabwe Community Leader of the Year, the Zimbabwe Business Awards. On July 2017, he was appointed as the Chairman of Council for the Chinoy University of Technology. Dr. Moe feared spearheaded the kidney transplantation program in partnership with Apollo Group of Hospitals India. Dr. Moe spearheaded the kidney transplantation program in partnership with the Apollo Group of Hospitals in India. In September 2018, Dr. Moe was appointed as the Honorable Minister of Health and Care. May I take this opportunity again to invite you, the guest of honor, to the podium and address the audience. Thank you. Very good afternoon to you all. I heard uh, Albert Nyati say, my son, don't shake your spear everywhere. Shakespeare, that is a very good message. Don't shake your spear everywhere. Uh, Honorable Ezra Chazamira, I want to say from the onset, uh, you talked about uh, creating a central hospital here in Mashingo. And uh, I want to say that uh, that is the correct spirit. My ministry will do everything possible to ensure that Mashingo gets a central hospital. And at the same time, we are not going to abandon the existing general hospital. You know, we'll spruce it up, refurbish it, and make sure that it's functional and in line with the referral system. So that will act as the next level, which will be referring 
to the central hospital. Saka Tichawa Nezipatara Ziviri Muno Mu Masingo. Tichange Zichifidgo Nema District Hospital Zachuya Ikoko Kuchipatara Zozoenda Kunema Specialist Ku Central Hospital. Leku Nak, Acting Chief Executive Officer. Uh, Manenji, Albert Manenji, Netim Yenu, Tinofara, Kuti Ma Kwansa Kuronga, Chirongwaich. Ta tenda teachings wa Kuti Zua Remuswa one December. Arisire commemoration chat. Asirato Azua Rekuti Titangi se Zirongwa Zegorese. Nasi kusuka muswa 31 November Tine tichi parura zirongwa zegorelese Tozo tanga futi muswa 1 December Gorele mwene rimwe UNAIDS Acting Country Director Mr. Martin Odit that I had the, 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 the call you Martin Odui We also have a Dr. Martin Odui You know so um, if you don't mind, you know, it's just, I think it was just a sleep of thought. I would like also to thank uh, the U.S. Deputy Chief of Mission, Mr. Thomas Hastings. You mentioned that the United States has given us a lot of money, 153 million. 153 million, that is a lot of money. So we want to thank you. And uh, it's, you said it's over a billion since you started, which is excellent. You know. The other representatives of um, the UN agencies who are also here, thank you very much for being here. The representatives of implementing agencies, thank you for coming. Leadership of various organizations representing people living with HIV and people living with uh, HIV who are here today at this function. I want to say the media, thank you very much for the coverage. Without you, we would not be able to send through all the messages which are educative. The Ladies and gentlemen who are here, distinguished guests, I am very pleased and honored to have been requested to be the guest of honor at this important event to mark the commemoration of the 2019 World AIDS Day. This commemoration is both a national and global platform for the community of nations to remember those that have died due to AIDS and reflect on the progress we have recorded in responding to the pandemic as well as rededicate ourselves to revitalizing the response and change its trajectory towards ending AIDS by 2030. Our theme this year is Communities Make the Difference. With this theme, we are celebrating the contribution communities have made over the decades to shape the response and their pivotal roles in maintaining the momentum in tackling HIV and AIDS. I just want to make sure that we are all aware of the um, theme this year. I want all of us to repeat this. Communities make the difference. Let us all repeat. Communities make the difference. Communities make the difference. I'm sure we all recall the days when HIV was first discovered, when there was no treatment and our people died in thousands per week 
due to HIV. Communities were and remain at the forefront of the response, looking after the sick and advocating for better services, including optimal financing. They have shown resilience in the face of HIV-related challenges, which include, among others, loss of loved ones, increasing out-of-pocket expenses, drug stockouts, dealing with adverse reactions, access to nutritional food, and others. Today, the response has changed. The country has pushed back on new HIV infections. HIV incidence and prevalence have both decreased from 1.42 in 2011 to 0.5% in 2018. Nearly 1.2 million people have ever been initiated on ARVs out of the estimated 1.3 million infected with HIV. The level of stigma has also gone down as communities no longer fully stigmatize and discriminate against those infected and affected with HIV. These significant milestones would not have been reached if the communities were not fully mobilized has been unrelenting in providing support. The recent scars as a result of Cyclone Idai are still fresh among our people and were probably worse among people living with HIV. Risk and exposure to HIV infection usually become heightened in communities affected by natural disasters. We are in the midst of the 16 days of activism against gender violence and I would like to add my word of support to that initiative. As you know, more women are affected by HIV. Young girls and women are sexually abused and turned into brides, exposing them to HIV infection and forcing them to abandon their studies and dreams. Local leaders and members of the community and law enforcement apparatus have a duty to play in truncating this diabolic phenomenon. Next year is 2020, the year of the 90-90-90 targets. We need to ramp up activities in the coming 12 months for us to achieve our targets. This, as I have alluded to earlier, should include case-based surveillance and taking HIV prevention services where evidence suggests most new cases of HIV to be. The most affected populations, such as the youth, girls and young women, sex workers, mobile population, key populations should be prioritized. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, let me talk about the need for more resources to support the response. Funding for the response remains a major challenge as we grapple with the economic setback occasioned by poor productivity and critically low levels of foreign currency. I've been informed that the National AIDS Council collects millions of dollars but have challenges in accessing foreign currency to procure critical HIV and non-communicable drugs and commodities. I'm therefore appealing to government to prioritize allocation of foreign currency to NAC to ensure that we do not delay buying the requirements resulting in loss of value. Finally, I would like to thank the National AIDS Councils and all the partners and donors, as well as the community for their hard work in 2019. Despite an array of challenges, your contribution and participation have been very immense and are the building blocks towards ending AIDS. It is now my singular honor and pleasure 
to declare the 2019 World AIDS campaign officially launched. I thank you. In the Minister Mbandi Talisa, the government of Jagans <laughs> Minister, no kumbira mutsire, mutore jiposhe. Rimwe kwa irangu le chipi. Wali zire mashu ku Minister of State. Pai tino kuziwa, tino pai wachi fuwa jaka farm. Ndai mudo la, kido shara, makasunguka katete. Our guest of Ovona, Minister of Health and Child Care, Dr. Omoyo. Our Minister of State for Provincial Affairs, Mashingo Province, Honorable Ezra Chazamir. United States Deputy Ambassador, Mr. Thomas Reskins. UNS Country Director, Dr. Amadeo Dick. UNDP Deputy Court, Deputy President Coordinator Program, Madalina Bonaja. People living with HIV, civil society, government, NAC, and other officials here present. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been given a very small task to pass as on the behalf of communities our gratitude to the support that we have been given. Our first vote of thanks goes to the government of Zimbabwe with the commitment that I have on the national response to HIV and AIDS. This has been so demonstrated by the two ministers who have forgone their Sunday and been with their families today for, for blessing this day. Our second vote of thanks goes to our partners. These have said, Zimbabwe, you will never walk alone in the national response to HIV and AIDS. And I'm quite sure you have heard the contributions they have made. I also want to express our appreciation of the hard work that was done by the community stakeholders to make this day a success. On behalf of the National Health Council, we also thank the mighty for making this day a successful day. Like the minister has said, we are now in the campaign mode where we are appreciating, we are appreciating the fight, the contribution, the never die spirit that has been demonstrated by communities. Thank you. This one from you. Uh, how, how has been this year's preparations of the National AIDS uh, for the World AIDS commemorations and what are the milestones that, that you feel uh, should be highlighted? Thank you very much. Uh, this year's World AIDS preparations is organized year in, year out. Uh, involved a lot of our stakeholders and uh, the stakeholders worked very hard particularly the customization of our international world as team that uh, is uh, communities making the difference uh, 
and uh, customizing of that was not easy and uh, also getting everybody together and things moving the way they have moved this was quite exciting and impressive and uh, when you host an event and there are no challenges it actually gives you a very comfort and that uh, things have moved and the organization was quite good um, as a country i think we have uh, done a lot we have reduced our um, death uh, rate from about 47,500 per annum to about 36, but that number is too high. It's too high because we are saying that the, the special blood of a Zimbabwean should not be spilled because of HIV. We really need to leave this to zero death. So, as communities, we want to work towards reducing our death rate, new infections, and stigma and discrimination to zero. And uh, this can be not be done by anyone other than the communities. And uh, we are very happy that, as National Health Council, our effort this year and next year, in terms of funding and other things, we are focusing on the communities. We are developing a new strategic plan and the new strategic plan is going to have a section that is dedicated to the communities because one of our mandate is to build the communities to be able to respond to HIV and AIDS and this is critical and we all appreciate and understand where the communities came from if you look back we used to have the communities bearing their own because of the ravaging of HIV and AIDS. Today we are celebrating people who are living for more than 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years with HIV because of the communities, the support they are giving to each other. So as a result, we continue to thank the communities. And this year, like I have said, next year we are already prepared to support them with both in terms of financial capacity, um, technical capacity, so that they will do their work without any fear of uh, underfunding. You, 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 you have a plan that ends in 2020. What, what, is, what is the plan beyond 2020? Well, the interpretation of 2020 is that we were talking of the 90s, 90s, 90s. So it was actually saying, the first 90, we are saying that let all the people living with HIV and AIDS, 90% of them know their status. And the second 90 says, those who know their status, 90% should be on treatment. And for those who are in treatment, 90% of those should be, uh, have the viral suppression. So that is the 99. But now we are now going to what we call the uh, phase where we are now speeding up the finishing. We are calling it the last mile. Because we are now saying we should finish HIV and AIDS as a health threat. So we are now focusing on the 95-95, which will then lead us to the end of AIDS as a public health threat in 2030. So we are already in that trajectory where we are now saying this is the last mile that we are going to just do away with HIV as a public health threat. I, I, want, to, I want to thank you very much for joining us at Heart and Soul uh, Broadcasting Services and thank you for um, telling the nation uh, the programs that you are having and I want to wish you the best of luck um, and the best of hard work in, in doing your work. Thank you very much. We always love, we always enjoy, we always uh, trust the support we get from our print, electronic and other form of media. And uh, we wish you, gentlemen, the fight that we have done so far. If you were not there, I'm quite sure it could have been half of the job done. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.